Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum, welcome back to my channel and I am Sana. Many of you have watched my first video and I don't know if you it, this is your first video. So thank you so much for coming back to my channel and with the mode of this channel I try to convey my ideas about different things, you know. Sometimes I'm writing on my blog also, on my Instagram post also and I think uh, uh, video is the most powerful uh, visual that it combines so many things, you know. Sometimes we don't have the right words when we are writing. People, they don't feel our emotions as such. As when they see you in real, your eyes, your expressions or how you want to say it. So this is, I feel, the most uh, impactful medium to convey your thoughts or emotions. And that's why I chose to start my own channel. So for today's topic, let's keep some suspense. Actually, I was reading one book uh, like uh, two days back and uh, it's called It's Not About the Burqa. So it's, uh, it's a list of essays by Muslim women from different walks of life. And some of the essays were really thought provoking and they were really, some of them were really angry also in their tone and they should be, I mean, I remember the time or in the context in which they are written. There was like a statement passed by the Prime Minister of UK then that the Muslim women, they are submissive by nature, you know. It's because of the Muslim that the men, they treat them like this or the society treat them like this. So I think the anger that is there in the essay is justified. But some of them, they're really thought-provoking and they're really informative, they're knowledgeable. One of them, it's, which really catches uh, my attention, is about uh, something which uh, Muslim community is not ready to accept. And uh, we have always uh, listened to, I mean, the wrong portrayal of a person who is dealing with a depression. They always say there is uh, nothing like a depressed Muslim, you know. There is... Uh, no depression in a uh, real Muslim, you know. So if you are having a depression, <laughs> there is a lot of judgment from the community, even in the family, even in your friends, that, okay, you're not praying on time, your iman is low, there is some problem on your side, you know. So, I mean, uh, in this age <laughs> where there is, you know, we have advanced so much, people are not ready to accept depression as a real disease i mean in, in our community it's like people are just warding off they are not ready to go to a psychologist or psychiatrist say kya main pagal hu and people start saying that bhai ye to dimag ki problem hai inko dimag ki you know it's like uh, this person is gone it's lost i mean that person is alive <laughs> he's fine and there is a problem and science is advanced and it can be taken care of, you know, with the help of... First, you have to acknowledge that there is a problem. And depression is real. I mean, people feel depressed, low there. I mean, at the end, when you are not uh, ready to uh, acknowledge or associate the problem, and then when there is a serious step done in the community, you are even blaming that person, you know, furthermore. I mean, the first thing, the first thing that we should do is we should have to accept that depression is real. It's a problem. It's a disease like any other disease. You know, brain is a part of your body. It's an organ. Just like you have a heart disease, you have a kidney disease, you have a skin problem. You can have a brain problem also. And anyone can has it. There is no particular evidence or relevance that, you know, because this one is not praying enough or his iman was low or he was not a rightful person, this has happened to him. No, it can happen to anybody. It can be you, it can be me, it can be anybody. And we as a Ummah, as a society, have to accept it and help that person, you know, instead of judging that. We have to stop that judgment part. It's a problem. And I mean, it's not only Muslim society, also in Southeast Asia, I mean, in Arabic in a culture, in Southeast Asia, all of it, it's, uh, I mean, the person himself or herself is not ready to acknowledge that problem. First, because I think she fears the judgment on herself also and from the family and friends, you know, what my family will think of me, what my neighbors will think of me or uh, 
I don't know, so many doubts and fears. And there are some brave ones who come out and acknowledge that thing and say, they, hey, I'm seeing a psychologist, I have this problem, I went to the doctor. And then the judgment starts in the community and people are talking hush hush, you know, she has a problem, yeah, this ka dimaag teek nahi hai, wo psychologist ke paas jati hai, isko dimaag kharab ho gaya hai. I mean, uh, what is all this? What are we talking about uh, of another person? We have to <laughs> stop this. I mean, it can be you tomorrow <laughs> going to the psychologist or psychiatrist or if you don't acknowledge, it can be even worse. So depression is real especially in the young people. I mean, there's so much stress of studies or pressure or career. And even the young generation, the lifestyle is so much stressful. It can happen to the young mothers. And uh, I, I mean, in any age, it can happen to you. It can happen to me. And we have to know that, okay, it's a, it's a normal problem. Like any other health issues, it's a normal brain and it's an organ and it can be affected because it's constantly so much in use. I mean, it's constantly at work even while you're sleeping, it's working. Maybe some of the body organs are resting, but brain is still not resting. So going to the doctor, going to the therapist is one thing. It has to be accepted. It has to be normalized apart from the prayers and everything that we as Muslims should do. And uh, that's all I want to say. <laughs> and there was one more thing I want to say that some parents, you know, they are not ready to understand that there is a problem if their children are showing symptoms of depression, that they need to be treated. It's like a taboo, you know, what I, it's like you guys say that my child is dying, he has a brain problem. It's such a big thing for the people, you know, still. Even, for example, somebody elderly and you feel he or she is showing some signs of symptoms and you tell them that you want to take them to the doctor. And then they're like, you to make what do you think? I'm crazy. I'm crazy. I mean, we have to come out of these things. And we have to see where is the world today. And it's completely okay to have a medical issue, to have a problem, to acknowledge that a part of your body, which is called brain, is tired, it needs some rest, maybe you are overthinking and overdoing things, and you need to see the doctor. I mean, what is the harm in it? What is the problem in it? But the problem is not in this, maybe you feel it's okay, you want to do it, but the judgment, you know? The society, the people around, they have to change and who are they? They are us. We are them. We are those people. If all of us have started to analyze and think and stop doing that thing, we are making, I mean, we are making a better society. I mean, what I'm saying, I have to practice myself also, you know, within my family or within my friends or circle. And if everybody is able to achieve that thing i think it's a dream come true you know this is where my dream is to reach you know that everyone is not judging any more depression or any diseases related to you know mental illness or mental awareness or mental health weeks i mean we are all posting on facebook on social media as we have been using hashtags but to practice it in real life is something different and it's completely different than putting up a hashtag on the Facebook or Instagram. We have to really go out and practice and tell our friends and family that, hey, if you feel lonely or depressed, just talk to me. We'll see what we can do, you know, and we will find a solution. And if your children, they're showing those symptoms or your family members or whatever, talk to them instead of nagging them about not praying on time or you know being in the bed all the time so i think to be more how do you say empathetic that you go into their shoes and see what they're feeling what they're thinking and yeah let's let's uh, do that first